welcome to the latest episode in Westpac Group's Grad Squad podcast series. All of our podcasts have been designed to offer listeners an insider look into our graduate and summer internship programs and bring to light some top tips and advice to set our listeners up for success. Hello to everyone listening and welcome to today's Grad Squad podcast on application advice, a topic that is at the forefront of final year students' minds right now as grad applications near. My name is Shanta Rolevska and I am currently undertaking my summer internship here at Westpac within the Westpac Institutional Banking Tech Team. So I'm studying a Bachelor of Commerce at the University of Sydney and I'm in my final year. So like many of you, I'm looking at applications around March this year. So it's Today, I feel really lucky to be sitting down with Nat Gibbons, a graduate programs consultant here at Westpac, and Nat will be running through the application process and giving us advice on how we as candidates can differentiate ourselves. So I'm so excited. Thank you for sitting down oh, with me today, welcome, Nat. Welcome, Chantelle. Thanks for taking the time out of your busy intern schedule. But no, I think this is great to be able to do. And given you've recently been through the process, it's great for you to be able to relive your experience and maybe offer some tips along the way as well. Yes, exactly. As, as you said, I undertook my application process quite recently. So it's all all fresh in my mind. Mm -hmm. So for those who don't know, run through the application process. Yes. So for our summer internship and graduate programs, it is the same application process. So everyone starts off with an online application and that is essentially just entering some details, uploading a resume, an academic transcript, and you're good to go. Um, Then candidates will move through a series of online assessments. Um, And then following that, we would ask candidates to complete a video interview. Interview. So once a video interview is complete, all successful candidates will then be invited to a half day assessment centre. And that in essence is the application process. It does differ from employer to employer. However, I would say the loose structure of that is generally an end to end application process. No, that all sounds so great. So how about we go through each of the steps and yeah. you can kind of give us advice yeah, on definitely. each of them. Yeah. So starting off with the resume, mm-hmm. obviously thousands of students apply for positions mm-hmm. like these. So how can we enable our resume to stand out from the crowd? Good question. And this is something I think students ask me all the time, especially at career fairs and reaching out to me on LinkedIn. With a resume, I think it's important, first of all, to be brief. Um, I live by the, the rule of brief is best. I would say for students out there, be looking at no more than two pages on a resume. You have to remember that this is just a snapshot of who you are. You have to remember that you want to leave some things to talk about and extend on at interview. So really a resume should just be a bit of an insight into who you are. Therefore, those two pages really is a nice amount to to be able to adhere to. I would also say another tip for me, the most important part of a resume is the career objective. This is also known as a personal statement, a career summary, and it usually goes at the top of the resume. So the first thing that somebody would read. This for me is a great snapshot into who somebody is. And it should really, in a couple of lines, just detail who you are, what you're about, your achievements, any skills, and what you're looking to achieve. It will take a couple couple of goes, practice makes perfect on this. But if you think about, you know, this is the first line or first paragraph that a hiring manager or a recruiter will see, you definitely want to make impact from the get-go there. Mm -hmm. So I would say, you know, we could be here all day just doing a podcast on resumes, but I would say just from this brief is best. And also then that first career objective um, to get right. Okay. So what would you say to those students who feel that they don't have any professional experience, Mm -hmm. so they're not qualified for a position like that? I have this again, the question quite a lot. And I always flip it on the student to say, well, what experience do you have? It doesn't necessarily need to be corporate. It doesn't necessarily need to be paid. A lot of our current grad grad cohort had community work that they did. They had unpaid work that they did. And a lot of students say to me, oh, but I've just worked in a supermarket or I've just worked in a service station. We need to flip that. It's not just where about where you've worked. It doesn't matter necessarily about the organization and the title. It's definitely those set of skills that you learn from that role. And it's about transferring them and trying to highlight them as much as possible. I know mm. you said you, it was, yeah, you only, no, you I totally, only had cafe experience, <laughs> yeah, right? Yeah, I totally agree with you because I feel like as I, as I've told you earlier, I worked at a cafe before coming here and you learn so many valuable customer service, you know, skills. Um, so any experience is helpful if you yeah. just make sure that you outline the, the skills that you've learned from 100%. that. 
Okay, awesome. So moving on from resume then, Mm -hmm. the online assessment, what would you give students, what tips would you give to students for that one? I I think with online assessments, the the key really to these is preparation. You really want to set yourself up for success and give yourself enough time. We see this a lot of the time, you know, deadlines approaching, students have multiple, you know, activities going on at uni work, grad applications, and they just don't leave themselves enough time to complete. So my advice would be once you receive that invite for the online assessment, straight away diarize a time to complete it. You want to give yourself opportune time to allow for things like bad connection. Um, you know, think of the location that you're completing it in. If you're, for example, a family home, you've got dogs running around, brothers and sisters, you really want to set yourself up in a quiet location and good connection and just be able to go through the assessment end to end with, uh, you know, as less stress as possible. How did you find your online assessment? Yeah, no, experience? I totally agree with all of that. Um, it gives you 48 hours. I believe when you get the email. Mm -hmm. So for me, I made sure I had no one home. I was focused in my own room, Mm -hmm. um, giving myself plenty of time because the last thing you want, as you said, is to leave it to that last couple of hours. And then you want to do yourself justice to Mm -hmm. be able to to give it as good a go as possible. You know, with online assessments, there's no real way to cheat the system. There's no right or wrong way to answer them. But, you know, just to give yourself the best chance, I think it's definitely about that preparation and just setting yourself up right. Yeah, no, 100%, especially because you can't necessarily prepare and do practice for those. Yeah, Yeah. Awesome. Okay. The video interview. Mm -hmm. So for this one, what would you have to say? Yeah, I look, I personally would love the video interview um, because it's, you know, your first, I guess, touch point with somebody to be able to showcase who you are. Let's, how did you go with your video? Yeah, no, I love the video interview Uh as well because I feel like you're in an environment that you're comfortable with. Mm -hmm. So for me, I like being home with no one around so that I can say whatever I feel I need to say without feeling embarrassed. Yeah. Um, And yeah, just, I feel like when it comes to the video interview, interview you kind of expect what questions they're going to ask you so it's just about being genuine knowing why you want to work for Westpac yeah and then obviously allowing your personality to shine through well I will echo all of that that you've just said I think with a video interview it doesn't come naturally to some people talking to a camera showcasing yourself that's definitely difficult for some people so I think in order to give yourself the best chances really just do a bit of practice everybody can set up their phone and you know kind of see how you're answering things or your answers structured are you looking at the camera just basic things like that that you take for granted Mm -hmm. sometimes with our video interview platform there is an um, opportunity to do a practice question so you can get your angles right you can sort of you know make sure your face is uh, you know front and center and make sure the levels of your mic are right so just kind of doing those general sense checks is is the first step But I think as well, you mentioned about being genuine. And I think that's one of the biggest things with a video interview is that we want to see your personality shine through. And we want you to do this through, you know, selling your experience, highlighting your achievements. So, you know, I think definitely try and showcase the real you. But also I would say as well, definitely do a bit of research. One of the questions, you know, a lot of employers will touch on is that motivation piece. Why do you want to come and work for that organization? And why have you chosen to, you know, launch your graduate or internship career with that company? And it's definitely good to have some, you know, prepared responses in terms of research on the company, but also points in your repertoire that you feel align with that company. So, you know, there's a fine line between being overprepared, but also to be genuine. So I think it's just finding that balance and you'll only do that through practice. Yeah, no, I totally agree. I think it's so important to be prepared and you want to make the most of that opportunity. You've come so far. You yeah. want to take advantage of that and, yeah. and do the best that you can Definitely. really. Yeah. Okay. The assessment center. I'm so keen oh. to get your advice on this one because this was the uh, stage in the application process mm. that I was most apprehensive for. Yeah. I think a lot of us students, we've never done one of these yeah. before. So it's quite nerve wracking. I is. myself wanted to pull out a couple of days oh, before. Gosh. And look, I don't think you're the, the only person yeah. who's ever felt that. I think there's a lot of pressure on students who do get to assessment center stage because it generally is the last step of an application process. What I say to students in terms of advice is to just kind of take a moment and just think of what you have achieved. You've come through a no doubt competitive application process to get to this last step. So give yourself a bit of credit. The business clearly have faith in you that they know that you're able to do the job. So now really it's over to you and and your time to shine really to actually put your best foot forward and showcase the real you. I know with our assessment centers, well, I like to think, um, you know, it's a very informal, relaxed setting. um, And, you know, between the activities that we run, there's opportune time to actually network with the other um, assessment center participants. We have current grads there to 
be able to network with the um, the students, you know, the grad team are there. So all in all, it's a great networking experience, if anything else. Hopefully that's how you found it too. <laughs> yes. No, I, I was, as I said, very nervous mm. before coming to the assessment center, mm-hmm. but it was smaller than I expected. So in yep. my head, I thought there was going to be a hundred <laughs> kids there or yep. something. I was yep. quite intimidated, but there, it was a more intimate group. So it felt less mm. stressful once there. And uh, I actually met one of the boys in my assessment center group. Yeah. I met him on the day and then we became close friends through the internship. Oh, no so uh, I'm a testament for that. It's a great experience to meet new people, Definitely. get along with one another. And just, as you said, make the most of it. Mm. Try not to get so bogged up by nerves. Yeah. And I think nerves do naturally yeah. play a part um, during an assessment center stage. Of course, we spoke earlier about that added pressure, but I think you just have to remove that stress element if you can from the day and just try and see the activities for what they are. Obviously with an interview, for example, I always say an interview is a conversation, not an interrogation. The assessors definitely aren't there to slip you up and try and catch you out. It's really just, again, that conversation piece about building rapport, understanding who you are, what you can bring to the organization and the role and the ability for the student to ask some questions as well. I feel this is really important and a top tip um, because it just shows that you've proactively done your research you're interested in the role and you know you can actually flip it on the the assessor and actually gain some maybe inside information that wouldn't be available on the website so I'd say definitely with an interview is ask some questions for you in the um the assessment center what activity were you most nervous about I think I'd have to say the group activity I was most nervous for just because I felt like everyone was so intelligent Mm. I felt a bit intimidated Uh um and I guess with me in the individual interview and the individual activity, Mm -hmm. you kind of feel like, oh, if I make a mistake, it's okay. No one sees, but in the group activity, everyone's there. But I think that's also um, a point of benefit because you can bounce ideas off of one another and and really help each other. Definitely. And I think with the group, it is important to say that a lot of people panic about this because they think, how am I going to make myself shine in this group environment? And what I would say is if you're not a natural leader, don't try and assume that position straight away it's not natural for you. You won't be comfortable and therefore you won't be showcasing the real you. So what I say to students who maybe, you know, don't have that kind of overtly leadership style to their personality, think about other ways that you can actively contribute. It's an assessment at the end of the day, so you need to make yourself heard, but it could be through those non-verbal signs, you know, for example, actively listening, contributing when needed, asking everyone to um, offer an opinion, offering to take the time, whatever it may be, to show that you're an active participant of that group is just as important as, you know, trying to take on that leadership role. And, And what I will say as well with the group activity, that it in essence is a a simulation of what a real life group project is like. We've all done them at some stage, you know, students complete group work at uni. We've all maybe had, you know, instances where we've had to collaborate. And and as Westpac's, you know, one of our core values, one team, it's important to, you know, to to showcase that through something such as the group activity. Mm, No, I feel like my experience is the exact same. And when I was there, I I feel like one of the things that you need to showcase is positivity and optimism. Mm, mm. And I think that, as you said, once you're there, you know, that we can all do the job. So it's about having the right attitude, the right mentality, yeah. um, including everyone being supportive of other people's ideas. Yes, yeah, definitely. Of the above, yeah. And I think that's important to do. And one thing that I will say as well, sometimes <laughs> this, this has cropped up a few times in conversation. A lot of students around the grad application time, it's a very stressful time. And, you know, they may be completing multiple applications. They've mm-hmm. got their uni work. They've got other commitments. A lot of students tend to come into assessment centers and just think they can wing it, that they'll just you know, read the website and they'll be, they'll be good to go. My, my response to this is that yes, you can kind of come in and preempt the questions that you'll be asked. However, I don't feel that you give yourself you know, justice. You don't do yourself justice. This is potentially your one time to shine, to really make an impression with that organization, to actually find out if it's going to be somewhere that you would like to start your career. And I just feel that, you know, in retrospect, you will kick yourself if you actually don't go a little bit above and beyond and be as fully prepared as you can. I know for me that if I'm prepared, I'm a lot more comfortable Mm -hmm. and therefore you relax more. So it's kind of just a domino effect, really. If you set yourself up to start with, it's only going to result in, in a more positive experience all around. 
Yeah, no. And I feel like regardless of the outcome, you will always gain something from the assessment center, mm-hmm. whether that be meeting friends, networking, or just knowing how to improve for next time. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. Wow. Thank you so much, Nat. Oh I think that's gosh, all we no, have time for that's today. absolutely fine. Thank you so much. And I think, you know, in retrospect, if you were to think about your application experience, if you would have been able to hear even a few things that we've covered today, I hope that would have been useful for yeah, you. Yeah, no, because I remember at the time I was looking on YouTube for videos yeah. for advice on assessment centers. Yeah. So I I 100% would have found this so valuable. Good. So thank you for your time. No, thank you very much and good luck with all of your thank graduate you. applications. Yes, I feel like all those tips will come in very handy very soon. So hopefully all of those listening have found this quite valuable as well. If you have any questions or comments for us, be sure to visit the website and contact us through there. But that's all we have time for. So we look forward. I'm sure Nat looks forward to Definitely. seeing all your applications <laughs> very soon. Yeah. Bye. Thank you.